Hey everyone, welcome to the channel. Another week, another bunch of gaming news has passed. Let's get into it. This week we got a trailer for Subnautica Below Zero. It will be getting a full release on the 14th of May for all consoles. Bioware released a trailer for Mass Effect Legendary Edition, showing off all the updates they've made to the original trilogy. They also threw in a bunch of quotes from some of the greatest characters of all time, like Garrus and Talizora. They put in Jack Wall's End Run, the music that plays during the ending of Mass Effect 2. They know what they're doing. They think they can just throw up an image of my main man Garrus, put in a quote from Talizor and Araya Vas Normandy, and think I'm gonna buy five copies on release? Well, they're absolutely right. Also this morning, Mass Effect Legendary Edition Project Director Mac Walters tweeted out that there will be a photo mode included in the game. Nice. CD Projekt Red's chairman, Adam Kaczynski, has told Reuters Magazine that they are committed to fixing Cyberpunk 2077. Kaczynski states, I don't see an option to shelf Cyberpunk 2077. We are convinced that we can bring the game to such a state that we can be proud of it and therefore sell it for years to come. So basically they want Cyberpunk to be that game that they could keep selling for years like how they did with The Witcher 3 and keep that steady revenue stream. Is Cyberpunk on the PS5 store yet? Cyberpunk's still on, not on the PlayStation store. It has now been over a hundred days, hot damn. Yep, no, still not on the store for those who want to buy it digitally. Next up, Nintendo has revealed a Switch Lite with a color scheme quite akin to the Game Boy Advance. If I had to pick a color, I think it would be this one. Hold on, I think I still have my Game Boy Advance somewhere. Reminds you of simpler days, huh? Back before we had to worry about housing prices. <coughs> Moving on. And now for some news for our Zoomer audience out there. Alloy from Horizon Zero Dawn will be making her way to Fortnite on the 15th of April. Big news. Um, is that... Is anything even sacred anymore? Is every character going to come to Fortnite? I mean, they got my boy John117 doing the default dance over in Tomato Town. I'm sorry, Master Chief. I'm sorry we did this to you. Moving along, Sony has come out with a massive update for the PS5. Some of the major changes include being able to store your PS5 games on an external hard drive. But, and it's a big but, you can't actually play your PS5 games off your external drives. You can store them away on your external drives, so you can make room on your PS5's SSD for games you regularly play. So instead of uninstalling the 200GB worth of Call of Duty, you can sort of just move it over to your USB drive and transfer it back to your SSD once you feel like playing it again. Saves you the massive download times, I guess. Another cool feature I want to touch on is the new cross-generational share play. You can now share your screen with your PS4 friends and let them play your game by streaming your PS5 game directly to their PS4 and vice versa. Pretty cool. Halo Master Chief Collection has entered Season 6 with a massive 55 gigabyte update. I mean, it's not, it's not that shocking. Warzone still has a beat, doesn't it? What was Warzone's biggest update? 70 gigs? Getting out the old phone again. If you had Warzone and Modern Warfare installed at the same time on PC, the update was 133.6 gigabytes. After 12 years, Halo 3 now officially has a new map. Well, it's sort of a new map. Waterfall is a UNSC outpost set on an icy world. It made its appearance in Halo Online, a Russian-only uh, free-to-play game, which is now defunct. Good work 343, now bring back Icebox, Halo Online's remake of Turf. Man, I love Turf. Final Fantasy XIV, the MMO game that has been running for quite a while now, just went into open beta for the PS5 on the 13th of April. Square Enix is promising a much more detailed game world and super fast load times. Last week I talked about how a developer hid Time Splitters 2 within Homefront The Revolution. 
Well, his tweet garnered enough attention and boom. Emulation extraordinaire Spencer Perrault came in with the play of the week and now we have the code to unlock Time Splitters 2 in Homefront The Revolution. Go play it, it's worth your time. Uh, how much is Homefront 2 The Revolution these days? Yeah, 10 bucks. Just go buy it. It's Time Splitters 2 is worth that much. Over five years after its release, we have a new Halo 5 Easter egg. Developer Patrick Wren released a few hints on Twitter last week about how on the mission evacuation there is a four-player mongoose race that can only be triggered in four-player call. YouTubers the likes of Rocket Sloth and General Kid swooped in to see how to unlock this bad boy. After a bit of help from Wren, the fanbase managed to trigger the easter egg. A report from Bloomberg has revealed that Sony is remaking Last of Us from the ground up for the PS5. Not a 4K upgrade or a ray tracing enabled port, a full on remake. So apparently this remake has been in the works since 2019 and was being handled by an internal group within Sony. I say was being handled due to the report stating Naughty Dog has now taken over the project and is now pushing full steam ahead with the remake as they have wrapped up majority of the work on The Last of Us Part 2. The report goes on to say that Sony's intention was to bundle the remake with Part 2 in some sort of ultimate PS5 Last of Us game package. Right. On to some Battlefield 6 rumours. Tom Henderson, a man who has been known to accurately leak Battlefield information in the past, has posted some info on what to expect in the next Battlefield game. According to Henderson, the game will be set in the modern day slash near future, something like 2030. So we can expect weapons that are currently in development or in concept by real world militaries right now. He attached some images at the bottom of his post. One interesting one is the Boston Dynamics robot dog. Imagine that thing running at you. The next game will simply be called Battlefield and will have a campaign where you get to choose to either fight for USA or Russia with your squad of specialists. Now these are rumours so don't take my word for gospel. House of the Dead is getting a remake, due out this year for the Nintendo Switch. The first House of the Dead came out in 1997 and was the epitome of on-rails light gun shooters, right there alongside Time Crisis. You guys remember Time Crisis for the PS1? That was... That was good. Capcom just premiered a Resident Evil Village showcase. Among it was a new trailer and the return of the Mercenaries game mode. This game mode has been in Resident Evil before and is known to be more arcadey and frantic in its gameplay, with the goal to be to complete the objectives as quickly as possible. New additions to the game mode include a shop to purchase items, weapons and upgrades. Ability pickups now scatter the game world and help to buff your character. Alongside this, they've also announced Resident Evil 4 for VR. We'll get more information about that later this month. Alright, that's the news for this week everyone. Thanks for tuning in. Hope to see you next week. Take it easy.